rubbing alcohol is available in the first aid aisle and it is famous for being able to kill bacteria. But there are so many other uses for rubbing alcohol around your home and in the realm of cleaning. So in this video, I'm gonna share some surprising uses for rubbing alcohol with you. So a couple points about rubbing alcohol before we get going. In order for it to be effective at killing bacteria, it's gotta be at least 60% by volume. So remember, as soon as you start diluting it, you're going to dilute the amount of alcohol you have in your recipe. So when you go to stores, typically you're gonna find it ranging anywhere from 70% all the way up to 99%. So just be mindful of that when you're picking it up and mixing it for different recipes. When it comes to using rubbing alcohol, of course there are many different ways you can use it around the house. It is a star in a first aid setting. You can use it for relieving muscle soreness and bruises. You can even use it on clean skin as an underarm deodorant because it kills bacteria. But I wanna get into some other ways that we can use rubbing alcohol around the house for cleaning and for sort of just general home hacks because this stuff is incredibly versatile. Here's a nice, easy cleaning tip for you. If your stainless steel is streaky and you just can't get it back to that beautiful factory shine, take some rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle, simply spray it on the stainless steel. By the way, this goes for large and small appliances, so toaster, kettle, but also your fridge and stove. Once that's done, you're gonna take a microfiber cloth and just buff in an S pattern, going with the grain, so that you get that nice shine. If you want a quick and easy way to disinfect your electronic items, specifically ones with non-porous surfaces, the easiest thing you can do is just get yourself a little rubbing alcohol wipe. You can pick those up in the first aid aisle. You're gonna look for one that has at least a 70% alcohol dilution, and you'll open that up and apply it to any of the non-porous surfaces on your electronics, making sure that you don't get into any of those cracks or crevices where a leak could happen. So you really wanna stay flat surface specific. The other applications you can use for this, uh, you can stick your finger in the middle of a cloth and kind of use it to wipe little areas of your keyboard. Again, making sure nothing seeps in. And if you notice there's any excess moisture after a couple of minutes, feel free to grab yourself a flat weave microfiber cloth and just give the surface a quick wipe. If you're looking for a pliable ice pack, those blue bricks just aren't gonna cut it for you. Instead, you can make your own by getting yourself a zipper lock freezer bag and using a two to one ratio of water to rubbing alcohol. So for example, if you have a one gallon zipper lock bag, you can add two cups of water and one cup of rubbing alcohol. When you seal the bag, you wanna make sure you get as much air out of it as possible. You're gonna stick that in the freezer and because rubbing alcohol is rubbing alcohol, it won't fully freeze, meaning that the water will be frozen. The rubbing alcohol will help keep everything bendable and moldable. So that way, if you have jaw surgery or a bruise, you can easily wrap that bag around wherever the ice is needed. Just as a general rule, whenever I bring home a new pair of earrings, I always clean the post and the backing with rubbing alcohol. So I add a little bit to a cotton pad and I just quickly clean that so that I feel good and safe about using them on my body. But rubbing alcohol can do a lot more for jewelry. Now, just to be clear, not for all types of jewelry. This is specifically for gold and silver jewelry and specifically for jewelry with stones that can tolerate this kind of cleaning. So stones are fine but costume jewelry and pearl jewelry, not okay. So the cool thing is if you have like rings on your finger and you're constantly putting on hand cream, you know that they get a little bit dull and lackluster. Think about doing this. Put your jewelry into about a half cup of rubbing alcohol. If you wanna be a little extra special, you can add a teaspoon of dish soap, stir this combo together, let everything sit for a few minutes, fish it out, plug your sink, and use a cleaning toothbrush to gently scrub. Then rinse and dry, and honestly, they will sparkle like the night sky, like a firecracker, like the day he proposed. Pick your thing. They're gonna sparkle, they're gonna look great. Now to be clear, permanent marker is meant to be permanent, but let's say it gets on some clothing and you really wanna try getting rid of it. There is something you can do with rubbing alcohol that might work. So here's the thing, like you might as well try it because it either will work or it won't, but if you don't try it, you'll never know. So here's what you do. You get a little stain on a garment, fine. Take a paper towel, put it under the stain. It's gotta be a clean paper towel. Then 
you're gonna take the area, take some rubbing alcohol on a little cleaning toothbrush, and you're kinda gonna dab an area around the stain. You're gonna create a ring around the stain. The next thing you're gonna do is start to apply rubbing alcohol, either with a cleaning toothbrush or the corner of a little sponge or something like that. You're gonna just start dabbing. And the idea is that you want the rubbing alcohol to break the bond of the stain and the clothing. So the paper towel underneath is there to absorb that ink, meaning you'll wanna fold it and get a clean surface often so that the stain isn't further saturating the garment. And as needed, you're gonna replace that paper towel. Now you'll continue doing this until as much of the ink is gone as you're able to get rid of. Then you're gonna launder the shirt as usual shirt, pants, I don't know what you got, and see what happens. And the hope is that it works. But again, if it doesn't work, don't feel too bad because the ink is indeed indelible. Another reason why rubbing alcohol is so great is because it is fast drying. It's also a solvent, which means that it can dissolve sticky things. So a great place to use rubbing alcohol is on glass and mirrored surfaces. Specifically, if you're someone who likes to style your hair in front of a mirror and you use a lot of hairspray, you might notice that there's a sticky buildup or you might have some sort of sticky splatter on your window that you just can't seem to get rid of without causing major streaks. Easy thing to do, put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a cloth and kind of just focus on that area if it's a centralized spot. If it's a more generalized spray, like something with hairspray, you can just douse your mirror with rubbing alcohol. Spray it down, let it sit for a minute, and then just wipe. And what you'll notice is the solvent aspect of the rubbing alcohol starts to break down that sticky stuff. You might have to go over it once more, perhaps with an equal parts mixture of water and rubbing alcohol. Just give your window or mirror a nice spray down and wipe down, and you'll see it is nice and clean and clear and not sticky. The other cool thing about rubbing alcohol, like I said, because it dries quickly, it's less likely to streak. Because of course rubbing alcohol is great at killing bacteria, we thought we would apply it to something that has odor causing bacteria, and that would be a pair of sweaty, smelly shoes. So here's the way this is gonna work. If you have a pair of shoes that you love, but you're embarrassed to wear because there's a bit of a stench, take some rubbing alcohol, spritz the inside of the shoe pretty liberally, and then on a sunny day, you wanna do this on a sunny day, put the shoes outside and let the sun do the rest of the work. Not only will it dry the rubbing alcohol, but the UV power of the sun helps to knock out bacteria as well. So you're using that kind of one-two punch to get rid of odors in those smelly shoes. If you don't want to spend a fortune on eyeglass cleaner, and by a fortune, I mean anything more than five cents, you can make your own. Get yourself a little spray bottle, fill it three parts with rubbing alcohol, one part with water, and add a drop. And when I say a drop, I mean like a teardrop size drop of dish soap. Give that a good shake, and voila, you have an eyeglass cleaner. When you're cleaning your glasses, you wanna make sure that you're using a flat weave microfiber cloth as opposed to your shirt or a paper towel, which can create micro scratches on your glasses. Rubbing alcohol is also a terrific degreaser. So anything from a sticker to a sticky, oily spot on your overhead exhaust, rubbing alcohol can deal with. And the way that you're going to apply it is so simple, you just put a little bit on a cloth or paper towel and apply it, but you wanna make sure that when you apply it, it is fairly damp and because rubbing alcohol dries quickly, you're gonna to have to use quite a bit of it. Alternatively, you can spray it onto the surface and let it sit for a couple of minutes before wiping it off. Now, the one thing to know is rubbing alcohol is flammable. So it's important to make sure that when you are using rubbing alcohol, you're not using it around an open flame. Since we know that rubbing alcohol brings out that special sheen in stainless steel and chrome, it's also great to use on your kitchen sink. So if you notice there are water spots or you really wanna get that nice, beautiful shine, when you finish cleaning your sink, you can finish up by adding some rubbing alcohol either with a spray bottle or just putting some right on a cloth and using that to buff and shine the faucet, the fixture, and the sink itself. Now the other nice side benefit of this is it's a great way to offer two-step cleaning in your kitchen. So if you've cleaned your sink using regular cleaning methods and you wanna add that extra disinfecting punch, you can finish off with this as well. The benefit of course is you get the nice shine and you also get rid of any excess bacteria. And now you know so many different ways to use rubbing alcohol around the house. So I hope you found that helpful. And that brings me to this week's comment question. 
question, which is, and this, I'm very curious to see your answer. The question is this, what do you guys do? What like gymnastics do you guys do to avoid touching a germy surface? So when you're at a gas pump or when you're in a public bathroom, what are some of the things that you have done or have seen other people do um, that's either really clever or really funny, but you know they're doing it to avoid touching a surface? The other day I was walking into a Starbucks and I used my pinky finger to open the door. I actually really hurt my hand doing it. And there was a man just straight up staring at me, kind of laughing at me. And I'm like, excuse me, cold and flu season, trying to stay healthy here. But I'd love to know in the comments down below uh, what you guys do. Now, if you thought rubbing alcohol was cool, you are gonna be thrilled to learn about everything that hydrogen peroxide can do. And we've got a whole video about that topic right over here. You should totally check it out. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe to the Clean My Space channel. It's informative, it's well-researched, it's fun. There's me, there's lots of great stuff going on on here. So I hope to see you back here again soon. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.